Okay, welcome to another episode of Revenge Motion Graphics. Uh, we're going to today uh, do some quick HUD elements, some quick HUD uh, widgets. So we'll make something like this. And uh, this is going to be a rather quick tutorial based on my other ones. Uh, just uh, been experimenting with a little bit of um, uh, some of these repeaters and shape layers and all that. So this is kind of what this is. All right, so let's get started here. So the first thing I'll do is I have my new composition here and I'm actually going to make this a little bit darker from my background here. Maybe something like that. And uh, first I'll go ahead and start with my shape layers. I'll grab a, um, an ellipse. Um, here are my settings here. No fill, stroke of about two. And I'll just draw out a, um, a circle. I'll go ahead and go to this circle's position here and set both to zero. Get that perfectly straight. And while I'm here, I'll go ahead and um, uh, let's just duplicate the ellipse here. And I'll change its size so it's a little bit smaller. That way it will keep the same stroke and color and all that stuff and just have two paths here. So next thing I want to do is I kind of want to add a um, kind of a center object here. So in this case, what I'll do is um, I'm going to rename this group here just called elements or something like that. So the next thing I'll do is I'm going to make um, the same group here called elements. I'm going to make a new group um, within that group. And this one I will call, just rename this dial. So in here, uh, what I'm simply going to do is um, grab a grab an ellipse, or rather a rectangle. And I will make this sort of a uh, thin rectangle. Um, I'm going to uncheck the uh, constraints here and I'll do perhaps um, maybe a 10 on the X and maybe a 90 on the Y. Maybe even increase a little bit of rounded, uh, roundedness, roundness. And just uh, put that in the middle there. And here what I'll do um, to, to all these elements is I'm simply going to add a, uh, a repeater go to transform the repeater and kind of spread them out a little bit. Then on top of, or at the bottom of this rather, I'm going to add a wiggle transform. Okay, so what this is going to do, make sure you put it after the repeater, is when I open this up, I can go into the rotation and maybe put in like a 270 or something like that. So when I play this back, I should see kind of various random dial movements, maybe a little bit too much. Let's try 180. And I can also change the uh, speed. Let's do one for the uh, wiggles per second. And now I have something that kind of looks like this. I'm going to temporarily set my um, resolution to half so it renders faster. So now we have um, the wiggle transform driving that randomness in the rotation. Okay. So one more element I'm, I'm going to add here, and I'll do that uh, in a different shape layer. To make my life easier, I'm going to rename this as the, um, uh, let me just call this a dial it itself. And I'll just uh, go ahead and duplicate this, Command D. I'll go ahead and rename that duplicate to, um, let's just do the uh, circle. And let's go ahead and open that up contents, elements. Now, one thing that by trial and error I figured out is you want to go into your wiggle transform and set your random seed to one. Okay. Um, make sure that both of these have random seed to one. So what this is going to do is ensure that if even if I delete my um, path one and path two, um, it should still be linked so that the dial here and the dial here rotate exactly the same based on that wiggle transform which should be identical here and the wiggle transform which should be identical here. So the only thing left to do really is just to replace the uh, path here, the rectangle path in the dial folder. Um, we can even call this uh, you know circle and if I put a, an ellipse in there, 
we can size it down and push it on the y-axis for example and it should line up so I've tried this a couple times and um, if I don't have the uh, the seed um, set to one still keep it at zero I don't get the same kind of results okay so now these are both identical um, so here what I'll do is I'll turn off the stroke turn on the fill and give it that same kind of orange look I had before kind of yellow orange perhaps and if I play this back again everything should be pretty much linked up so the final thing that I did was I put an echo effect on my circle here and I put in the following settings if I don't change anything it kind of looks like this so basically what I did is I put in a minus 0 0.009 to um, make the echo uh, really, really quick number of echoes uh, let's try 25 um, starting intensity 0.38 and then the decay of 0.9 okay so if I play this back basically we have kind of a feathered gradient echo effect here okay so that's pretty much what I did to get those three now um, you can also make these smaller obviously you know if I just uh, grab both of these as for scale scale everything down and move them over okay so that's sort of uh, how I quickly did uh, those three dials that, that, that were on the original video. Okay, so the next thing I did was um, I made these two um, sort of uh, orbital trails with a, a couple of shape layers here on the left side here. So let's take a look at how we're going to do these two. Okay, so first thing I will do is turn off the three here and I will grab my ellipse tool. Um, let's give it a, a solid fill and no stroke and I'll just draw out a small circle here in the middle I'll go ahead and make it exactly in the middle by going into the transform of that ellipse and I'll go ahead and zero it out okay and as it is always a good habit um, to start doing I'm gonna grab a new group and I will put well, I, I'll first rename this I'll call this uh, um, circle and I will go ahead and put in there my ellipse path and also that fill that I just made again I like to do it this way that way um, I can sort of control these groups let me go ahead and get rid of ellipse okay so this is a perfectly centered circle and I'll immediately go to ellipse path and maybe I'll make it smaller and I'll move this up on the y-axis okay so here um, what I'll do is I'm going to, since it's in its own group I'm going to go ahead and uh, use a transform of this circle specifically the rotation I'll put a uh, wiggle expression in there maybe something like 1 comma 270 okay what that's going to do is just going to drive a lot of uh, rotation randomness here in the uh, by using the wiggle expression okay so that's step one here for step two I'm gonna make another new group this one I will call trail and in here right now it's empty I'll go ahead and put in an ellipse path and uh, I'll also put in a stroke okay so easy to just only use the elements you need by putting them in the group I'll make this larger maybe something like that to catch the orbit of the circle let's make the stroke a little bit more wide and maybe make this, uh, the circle itself slightly larger okay so right now we just have this uh, circle going around the path with an ellipse ring okay so let's go ahead and to the trail here let's add a trim pass okay and the trim pass will put after the stroke so with trim paths um, those of you that are not familiar uh, what you're basically dealing with are two um, properties start and end and there's also a third but primarily we'll be dealing with two 
so the way trim paths works is it has a, a start and an end and you can sort of see what happens when you bring both to zero you can make sort of a uh, right on draw on path here with that you can also control the start as well and kind of give you a range of, of a circle okay but ultimately what we're gonna do basically is have the end be either zero which allows me to draw clockwise path just by messing with the start or if end is 100 I can make start 100 as well and go counterclockwise so basically the end will, will drive if it's 100 it'll be counterclockwise if it's 0 it'll be clockwise all controlled by the start so that's kind of uh, the experimenting I was doing to figure out how I can make this thing uh, follow the uh, the circle here. Okay, so this is all going to be driven by uh, expressions. Uh, you can definitely try to do this with keyframes, but I don't recommend it. So the first expression is, let's go into the start. Okay, I'm going to click on the uh, option key and the stopwatch, go into expression mode. So I'm going to define one variable, x. So x is going to be equal to and what is x going to equal? It's going to equal transform of the circle rotation. So I'm going to go back here, grab my pick whip rotation. Okay. And if I just click away, um, we get something happening here, but not exactly what I want. What's basically happening here is um, rotation is based on degrees, however, start is based on a percentage. Now sometimes they do match when it's less than 100 degrees, but if you go more than 100 degrees start maxes out at 100. So what, we're gonna, what I'm going to do here is I'll divide this whole thing by 360, okay, which is it's going to give us a fraction. okay. To avoid that I'm going to multiply it by 100. Okay, That way, let me close this out, if, for example, I have 91.4 degrees in terms of a percentage of a, uh, of a circle, it's 25.4% or something like that. Okay, so the only problem here is if this goes this direction, negative values, this becomes zero and, mac and minimizes at zero. So we're going to fix that. So the next thing I'll do is I'll make a new line in JavaScript everything has to every line is, ends with a semicolon. I'm going to make a new line and I'll put in an if expression if x is less than 0 okay then what I'm going to do is if I put in some brackets here I'm going to put 100 minus another parentheses x times minus 1. Okay, so in plain English what this is going to do is every time the wiggle expression uh, which is driving the rotation of the circle every time that it goes negative degrees okay um, the x is going to be multiplied by minus 1 which will make it positive and then and then in order to shift direction and shift the starting point we're going to subtract we're going to put 100 minus that value okay if it's not I'm going to put an else just give me the value of x okay so let's take a look at this so if I play this back now basically everything is good with positive values but as soon as it goes negative I'm getting some weird results especially right about here okay so it kinda of is going okay but then it really should be coming from this side um, when it goes around like that so we'll fix that as well now the main way I'm going to fix this again is as I, as I spoke earlier is a lot of it has to do with what the end is set to so let's go ahead and make another expression for end. So here I'll do the same thing, x. Actually I can probably copy it from here and put that in here so I don't have to retype this in. 
hit enter or return. Now here, if x is less than zero, what I want to happen is just make this 100. But if it's not else, let's make that zero. Close that. So let's take a look at this now. So now what's, what's going to happen is it should drive that correctly. See now it changes and it switches pretty seamlessly here. Okay, so every time basically x is a negative number, it changes to 100. But as soon as it's a positive number, the end becomes zero. And that's how this is being driven here. Okay, so the last thing is, is uh, this orange uh, version of that same thing. Uh, and this one, just a simple fade. The uh, circle orbits around, uh, the more it goes away from the center, the darker the opacities of the orange. So that's going to be pretty simple to do. I'll just make a uh, duplicate of this one, Command D. And I'll go ahead and just move that one all the way to the right here. And here, all I'm going to do is, under the contents, the trail, let's change its color on the stroke to that orange that we saw. Okay, and if I just leave it alone, it'll just be an orange uh, version of this trail here. Let me make this a little bit more thick on the uh, stroke um, width here, so let's bring that up. So here, I'll go ahead and... Um, in the opacity of this, I'll make an expression. Okay, so just like we did before, I'm gonna do an x equals, and I'll grab that uh, the transform of the circle here at the rotation. So I'll do x equals the rotation, just like we did before. Again, I will let me move this up so we can see it a little better. I will. Uh, divide by 360, multiply by 100 to get a percentage. Close that off. And basically the next line is going to be another simple uh, if uh, else statement here. So if x is less than 0, let's go ahead and multiply it x times minus 1. Okay, if it's uh, not, so we'll do an else, just x. Okay, simple expression. Basically says if it's less than zero, we'll make it positive, and thereby we'll have a percentage that's positive. So if I play this back, every time it goes further away from the center, the line gets more opaque. Either way. Okay, then just to bring everything into view here. Let's bring all these guys and we'll move these out of the way. Let's also make them smaller. Just a couple of FUI HUD widgets with expressions and shape layers. So thanks again for joining me for a quick tip version of a tutorial and we'll see you guys next time.